Hey, it's Popnerd here, and today we'll be going over how to create a quick city in Blender using the built-in Scatter Objects add-on. So to get started, let's model a couple sci-fi shapes by scaling, extruding, and beveling some cubes. Starting with the base, I'll use some reference images to help create a simple tower shape. From there, we can just model a bunch of random shapes and place them around our base tower to add details. To create these shapes, I'll mostly just scale and bevel cubes to make them tall and add some details by adding more cubes. I won't be worrying about overlapping geometry in this case because I won't be using this in game engines or anything like that, so we can place these wherever we'd like. You can also quickly extrude and scale some other cubes to add spires and antenna on top of the tower. To create some more towers to place in our city, we can just duplicate our first tower and start rotating and rescaling different parts of the towers to create new unique buildings. But instead of doing this manually, we can actually automate this process by using the randomized transform tool. To use the tool, select the duplicated building and go to the object drop-down menu, transform and randomize transform. Now we can slightly change the scale and location values and click through different seeds. After using randomized transform, we can move floating geometry and duplicate, scale and rotate shapes as we want. Just keep in mind that you'll have to go through different seeds and move some shapes to get good looking buildings. Once you've created a couple buildings to place in the scene, let's merge all our building details with the bases we made for the towers. Then we can select all the buildings, go to edit mode, and quickly flatten the bottom of each building by enabling transparent mode, going to an orthographic view, selecting the bottom vertices, and pressing S, Z, 0 to even them out on the Z axis. With the bottom selected, let's also set the origins of the buildings to the bottoms by setting the origin to selected by pressing Shift S. From here, we can start texturing the buildings. To find textures, let's go to textures.com and go to the building section. I'll be trying to make a foggy scene with buildings that have lit up windows, so I'll look for a seamless texture of a building at night. Once you have your texture, let's change your base color to an image texture in the material properties tab of our building and open up the image we just downloaded. Let's go to edit mode, press A to select all the faces and right click and click Q project. We can adjust the textures by opening the UV editor and scaling it up or down. Furthermore, if you're also using a texture of a building at night, we can open up the shader editor and plug the color of the image texture to the emission slot of the principled BSDF. If there are certain shapes on the building that you want to remove windows from, we can select that shape by pressing L while hovering over it and scaling down the UVs in the UV editor. To create some smaller buildings, we can just duplicate the towers and scale them down on the Z axis to adjust the UVs. To scatter these buildings to create our city, we'll be using the free built-in Scatter Objects add-on. To enable this add-on, go to Edit Preferences Add-ons and search for the Scatter Objects add-on and enable it. Once you've enabled the add-on, go to the Interface tab and enable Developer Extras. Then let's add in a plane and scale it up to be the base for our city. Now if we select a couple buildings, then select the plane and use the Object Scatter add-on by pressing F3 to search, we can draw on the plane and the buildings will be scattered across your drawing. In the Tool Properties tab, change the rotation to zero. We can also adjust the density, scale, and randomness of the buildings in this tab. Before continuing to place more buildings, I would recommend placing your camera first so you won't have to focus on working on areas that won't be in your camera's view. I'll think of the scene having a background, foreground, and a midground, where the focal point of the scene will be. I've already scattered enough buildings for the background, so I'll start scattering some more of the smaller buildings in the foreground so they won't block the focal point. For the midground, I'll duplicate the original models we made and manually place them. For the building that'll be the main focal point of the scene, I'll scale up the building so it towers over all the other buildings, and I'll add a couple more small buildings where there's a lot of empty space so the plane isn't showing at any point in the scene. If you go into the rendered view, we can see all the buildings, but there's no lighting or depth. So to add some volume and depth to the scene, let's add in a cube and scale it up so that it covers the entire city. Then in the shader editor, let's create a new material and press Shift A to search for a principled volume shader and use that to replace the principled BSDF. I'll set the density to 0.001 and the emission strength to 0.003. I also want the fog to have a slight blue tint to it, so I'll slightly change the emission color as well. 
We can add some depth of field as well by selecting the camera, going to the camera settings, enabling depth of field, setting the focus object to the main tower, and messing with the values. The lower your value, the blurrier the objects outside your focus object will be, and vice versa. We can also easily add clouds to the scene by finding transparent images of clouds on textures.com and adding them into the scene with the images as planes add-on. We're basically done, but you can keep adding more to the scene, modeling some simple roads, adding cars, using an HDRI for lighting, and whatever your imagination comes up with. I decided to go with the foggy scene for this render, but you can always easily change the textures of the objects and the lighting in any way you want, and I would recommend to do so. When you're ready to do so, just hit render, and there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please subscribe and hit the like button, and I'll see you all next time.